Generally, marginalization or exclusion threatens three basic human needs, belonging, autonomy, and competence. People feel the need to belong not only to few important others, but also in contexts where they are surrounded by strangers. Without the feeling of belonging, people are sus susceptible to physical and mental illness. The need of competence and trust in these competences is part of the self-determination process. Being excluded makes people wonder about the reason why, and ruminating on this matter is more taxing to their perception of competence than being confronted or offended directly. Being confronted directly also provides a form of control, like choosing how to respond or how to regulate one's emotions while being excluded leaves the individual powerless to affect the course of the interaction, reducing their sense of autonomy. The lack of control previously mentioned leads marginalized individuals to acts of aggression and antisocial behavior as a way to exert some form of control over the situation. Seemingly, the most adaptive response to rejection would be to become nice, friendly, agreeable, well-behaved. After all, if one group has rejected you, then you need to make new friends in order to replace the lost connection. One of the surprising findings of the rejection work was how hard it was to find any such positive pro-social behaviors in the wake of rejection. Antisocial behavior emerged in some of the earliest studies of rejection. They have found that social exclusion led to an increase in, in aggression toward new interaction partners, including those who provoked or insulted the participant, and even neutral and thus innocent parties. New interaction partners who praised the participant did not elicit either an increase or a decrease in aggression. In summary, rejected participants appear to be ready to behave in hostile, aggressive ways toward a broad assortment of others. These data converge to studies of rejection outside the laboratory.